Well, despite the many lies of Hulk Hogan in his interview with Theo Vaughn on this past weekend, Hogan did tell a story that at least is based in some sort of reality here. And that's the story that I've always found fascinating, as a matter of fact, the story of the Marvel Comics lawsuit with the WWF over the trademark of Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania, all of that. This, of course, stems from back in the day when Hulk Hogan was billed as the Incredible Hulk Hogan. This was, I believe, he got the name Hulk Hogan when he went to New York the first time. He worked for Vince Sr. He was given the name The Incredible Hulk Hogan. I don't think he had it before then, but he might have. And then, of course, he had it in the AWA. And once he went to the WWE, that put him on a very big radar. And suddenly these little local regional promotion things that he could get away with before, he could not. And Marvel came a-knocking for that trademark, obviously because of The Incredible Hulk. Well, let's take a listen to the story from Hulk Hogan himself as he explains to Theo Vaughn on the podcast this past weekend. Check out this clip. And right when this Hulk Hogan thing takes off, we get a call from Marvel Comics. You're infringing our mark. Reasonably oh, similar. Lou Ferrigno's character. The, with the cartoon character. Incredible. In the, in the magazine. It yeah. was before the TV series. Right. You know, you're infringing on our mark. We're going to sue you, put you in litigation. So we went ahead and and let them have the name. Didn't license the name, but they only had, I only had to pay them one tenth of one percent. Oh, wow. So out of a dollar, if I got a penny, I, had, I only had to pay them one tenth of a penny. Mm. And that went from 85 to 2005, 20 years. Fast forward to 2005, it's over. You know, and I, now I can't use Hulk Hogan. Again. I'm red hot in 2005, man. Ah. I, I'm still jamming. So I went to my attorney. I said, I don't give a damn what deal you make. You're going to make that deal because I need the name. So what happened was we went and I got a one-year extension. And I had to pay him 30% of everything I made. Mm -hmm. Movies, TV, wrestling, damn. they got 30% of everything. But if they decided to sell the name... Mm -hmm. They had to give me first shot at it. They couldn't, you know, sell the name or do anything, you know, right? And, at a fair market value. So all of a sudden, Marvel Comics gets in a bitch fest with the WWE about intellectual properties that they can't re-air old Hulk Hogan matches, which no. Vince was re-airing all yeah. this stuff. They lost. Marvel Comics lost, and they owed Vince like uh, thirty-five million dollars, and they made the huge mistake. Of including that in the deal? And they said, no, instead of paying you $35 million, how about if we give you the Hulk Hogan name? And I heard about it, and I went, you guys screwed up now. Because now I don't have to pay $35 million for the name. You have to sell it to me at fair market value, which is only like seven hundred fifty grand. Wow. Yeah, so I bought the name back. And Vince wanted to buy the name for me. I went, nah, I think I got this one. Let me get this. Yeah, I got this one. So, wow, did that feel pretty? Yeah. That must have been a cool moment because then it's almost like you own yourself. Yeah, so I bought the name back and I just own everything. Wow, congratulations, yeah, man. So, it's really hard to do in, these, in, yeah, in the world. Yeah, there's not many guys you know, that have that can say that. Yeah. I will go ahead and trust Hulk Hogan on this one that uh, he's telling mostly the truth here. This is something that's always fascinated me. Anytime you go back and you look at like the old video games or whatever the fuck you see that includes the licensing of Hulk Hogan, you're always going to see uh, Marvel Comics in the licensing, in the, in the little Q fucking thingies and all of that as well. Uh, I was always curious how that deal worked, how things came about. <clears throat> Sounds like, you know, they just got a little piece of the pie. You can just keep using it, and uh, we'll make some money off of you. Sounds a bit low, but I guess when you're talking millions and millions of dollars, that 1% that of 1% adds up quite a bit. And uh, so I'm sure the Marvel got a nice little pretty penny out of Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania regardless. This was also, Hulk, Hulk said that it went up through 2005. Uh, he said there that he was still running pretty hot in 2005. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. 
Uh, that's a bit of a stretch, but, uh, you know, look, uh, there's a large part of those years where he went by the name of Hollywood Hogan. And not only was that a smart rebranding for the NWO bad guy character, but it was also a smart way to avoid playing paying Hulk Hogan fees, right? If you can be referred to as Hollywood Hogan... And he would call himself Hollywood Hulk Hogan from time to time. They never officially dropped the name Hulk Hogan, but it was something that they did kind of quietly slide out of the occasion and just kept referring to him as Hollywood Hogan and uh, putting that trademark on merchandise and stuff. And it was a very slick way to avoid, like, even sounds like they would have still been under that deal, though I don't know how that works either. See, uh... Hulk is an unreliable narrator to start with, right? You can't really, like his dates, his timelines, his his exact details are sometimes slightly exaggerated. As I talked about in a previous clip, if you're just watching the clips, go check that out. I'll link it. Uh, I'll put it as the end video to check out next. Uh, If you're listening to the full pod, then you know already Hulk is a fibber sometimes, to say the least. So it's hard to trust, right? And then, you know, this deal was uh, apparently made with the WWF, but he was Hulk Hogan in WCW. So did 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 the deal follow Hulk Hogan? <sighs> it's all very uh, vague, to say the least. I would like some more clarification. If anybody is smartened up to that that's watching this and wants to leave it in the comments, that would be dope. But, uh, you know, anyway, they quickly transitioned to Hollywood Hogan, and it was a good way to avoid paying those marks for uh, a great number of years. But if it played out the way that Hulk said about how he got his trademark back, and, of course, there was absolutely a period of time there where Marvel was on the verge of bankruptcy, And they would have been liquidating assets. And that's how a lot of that shit, that's how a lot of the studios acquired the movie rights to a lot of the Marvel characters, in fact. And why a lot of the Marvel characters have not been used or even referenced in a lot of the MCU movies. Uh, To this day, they cannot make an independent Incredible Hulk movie that's owned by Universal Studios, though they can have the Incredible Hulk in movies. Um, To this day, they can't use Spider-Man without pairing up with Sony. Sony owns Spider-Man. That's a Marvel character, but Marvel Studios, the one that's owned by Disney now, the MCU, they don't own Spider-Man. They license, they use, they borrow, they partner with Sony to create Spider-Man movies in the MCU, and it's beneficial for both parties, but that's a character that they do not own the rights to. Same with uh, X-Men. X-Men they finally now have because Fox owned the X-Men, and Disney eventually bought the those properties off of Fox, and now those characters have the ability to merge into, that would be like Deadpool, and that would be the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Those are all Fox properties, and now those have the opportunity to merge into the MCU. And you will see those in the future, but that's why you haven't yet. <clears throat> so it's all very interesting to see how that played out. Obviously, during that period, it sounds like, is when they would have you know, tried to get rid of those rights to Hulk Hogan. We're going to sell off the rights to Hulk Hogan. And tried to use them to settle a lawsuit with Vince. According to Hulk, Hulk acquired the rights, stepped in, and had that uh, first dibs uh, catch in the contract, according to Hulk. Take it with a grain of salt, if you will. But that's it's a very interesting story. I love, I get really horny over stuff like that, trademarks and royalty, uh, trademark royalty rights and and who owns what and, and how things are meant to be. Uh, there was a big stink over like the Friday the 13th films. Uh, you know, that's just now starting to get back up and running because the guy who created the original Friday the 13th movie was trying to claim, you know, like he, he like after a certain period of time, the rights revert back to the writer of things. And the, so the writer is trying to claim ownership of Jason Voorhees. And Friday the 13th, and though he wrote the first movie, he didn't have anything to do with the rest of the movies, or Jason. 
you know, other than he created the character of Jason, but not as we see him in the later sequels. He was just a little kid that popped up out of the water. And of course, we're not doing a horror movie review, so I digress, but you get the point. This kind of shit gets tied up in litigation all the time, and it, and it makes me really horny. And, you know, the Hulk Hogan name for years and years got a little piece of the pie sent to Marvel Comics. And you always see that, you know, to this day, you'll see the little Marvel trademark copyright on things that have Hulk Hogan. So, fun little story, be it uh, 100% true or not, I'll leave that up to you. But I really do enjoy these kind of copyright stories. And this, by the way, was a fantastic interview. Despite the many lies of Hulk Hogan and all of his bullshit stories. And quite frankly, Hulk came off as a little bit of a grump at times. There's a lot more of the Hollywood Hogan, if you know what I mean, coming out than the Hulk Hogan. I don't know if it's just because he's, you know, having a hard time getting around and all that stuff. But he's very, and I've noticed this in other interviews too, he's kind of becoming more dickish. In his old age. Um, that's just my observation. Maybe I, I'm reading it completely wrong. But Theo is a great... I mean, man, if you're not up on Theo Vaughn as a comedian, his stand-up's hilarious. But his podcast, his interviews that he does, he did one with Ric Flair too. So if you want to kind of at least start with the wrestling, you could watch this one with Hulk and then the one with Ric Flair as well. Theo's an interesting dude. He's funny. His sense of humor is really dry uh, in a way where you don't really know if he's joking or if he's just stupid. If he's fucking with you, it's it's really fun. Uh, he's a fascinating guy. He asks fascinating questions as a fan. Just interesting. You know, he, he tells a good story throughout. You know, he takes the Hulk through a really good journey of, you know, kind of... <laughs> answering questions for a wider audience that maybe is obviously heard of Hulk Hogan but are not wrestling fans per se so really cool shit link in the description below let me know your thoughts if you caught it if you uh, have any insight more into this lawsuit type situation holler in the comments below I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next Brother. Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.